Welcome to the Designing Hollywood podcast in association with The John Campia Show. I'm your host, Tess McLeod. This episode is sponsored by Costume Rental Corporation. Designing Hollywood podcast is about all things movies, the movie industry, and its talented professionals. Today's guest is an award-winning and groundbreaking designer who has built a long and illustrious career working with some of cinema's most prominent filmmakers. Her early collaborations began with Academy Award-winning director Oliver Stone on the biopics The Doors and JFK. She then went on to work with James Cameron on the iconic Terminator 2 Judgment Day and True Lies. She continued her work on Ali with the accomplished director Michael Mann and then moved to more contemporary drama with award-winning director Alejandro Gonzalez Iñárritu on 21 Grams. She has designed costumes for many other noted directors and producers on contemporary films including Jerry Bruckheimer's Gone in 60 Seconds and Coyote Ugly, Joel Schumacher's Falling Down with Michael Douglas, David Dobkins and The Judge with Robert Downey Jr. She's collaborated with Ben Stiller on three projects, Tropic Thunder, Night at the Museum, Battle of the Smithsonian, and Night at the Museum, Secret of the Tomb. Her work with Will Smith also spans three films, Ali, Hitch, and director Tony Scott's Enemy of the State. Stewart has worked with director Sean Levy on four movies that include Hugh Jackman in Real Steel and Steve Carell in Date Night, as well as on two films from the Fox Night at the Museum franchise. Her repertoire also includes the sci-fi film Oblivion, directed by Joseph Kosinski, on starring uh, Joseph Kosinski and starring Tom Cruise. Without further ado, it is my pleasure to welcome award-winning costume designer Marlene Stewart to the Designing Hollywood Show. Thank you for the uh, opportunity to be here. Of course, that is quite the introduction. You have a huge <laughs> repertoire of anything from film fashion, commercial. I mean, you've done Madonna and now Maverick. What was that like going from that transition from styling one of like films or uh, music's icons to now addressing some of Hollywood's A-listers? Well, you know, that is a big time span in between. So it wasn't that big a shock. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say, you know, working with Madonna in the early days kind of gave me some great training. Mm -hmm. um, when I, I was earlier in the fashion business, so I made a transition from there to early days of MTV working with Madonna. You know, she was an amazing uh, icon, she still is, and then gave me an opportunity to kind of get my feet wet in the movie business because I learned about production, I learned about on set work and got a chance to meet a lot of interesting uh, set and crew people and then transitioned to later films with Oliver Stone, as you mentioned. Yeah, of course. So how did you get your foot in the door with even getting in the same room as someone like Madonna? Like, how did you start in like fashion and clothing? Like, what was your first step into that world? Well, you know, I, I had graduated from UC Berkeley in a totally different field, mm -hmm. and then um, later on decided to go back to school at FIT. Oh, great. And so I have a degree in design, and I was in the garment business, and I used to design, sell to most of the major department stores. Mm -hmm. So, the, you know, all these transitions were kind of natural uh, and sort of easy, although I did have a bit of an interesting road from fashion into working <clears throat> <clears throat> on music videos because back then it was in the uh, early mid 80s of course and um basically um i would do i did sportswear and dresses as well and i used to do a lot of things in black lace you know mm. i know madonna was you know already wearing her black <laughs> lace so i want to say that when the time came for me to go on an interview for uh the job to work with Madonna on some music videos, it really wasn't too much of a stretch. I mean, mm. each transition, really one thing led to another. But later on, as I started working in the business, um, doing all these videos, I think Oliver Stone noticed because I was working with so many people in the music business. Yeah. So when I went for the interview for The Doors, I had already had quite a bit under my belt in terms of doing live tours with various oh. musicians particularly Madonna, I did quite a few live tours with her and a lot of music videos. So each transition, although it sounds drastically different, mm -hmm. sort of one thing pretty much led to another, which I think 
happens pretty much to most costume designers, I think. Yeah, because I know a lot of people, um, costume designers in particular, they start careers in fashion and they go to like fashion based mm -hmm. colleges and universities. And then they really like a lot of the time that's where they get all of their connections. And then right. they branch out and some people go into music video and film and concert and theater. And there's just such like an amalgamation of different areas you can go into and it's so impressive that you have done all of those like that yeah. i mean some people i feel like can only say they've done one to two but i feel like everything you have tackled and you've even won the career achievement award in 2012 i mean that's how you know, like substantial you, like all your work is well it's fairly you're, impressive <laughs> you're very kind to say that um you know i think every different costume designers come to the business from some people come from theater mm -hmm. i came from fashion uh and then sort of segued as i mentioned i learned sort of what it was to be on a movie set mm -hmm. on a lot of Madonna videos because she at the time was making huge videos. I mean, she had Academy Award winning crew members, DPs, directors directing yeah. her. So I met those people and then sort of got a chance to sort of experience what it was like to be on set. But the training I had in the fashion business for production, pattern making, mm -hmm. working with seamstresses, all the skills that you really need to be able to design like all those characters, technical skills. the technical skills, of right. And of yeah. course, having gone to school for it really helped, mm -hmm. you know, later on in, in my career. So yeah. I think you just build on it. And uh, my attitude really was, uh, you know, to sort of be open to new opportunities. And myself as a person, I really prefer to constantly do new things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, some people get to be known for doing period films at the time. Of course. When I started in the business, really, the apex was to do big period movies. Um, now it's really become more eclectic, which is great. You can do sci-fi, fantasy. In the old days, and I say in the old days, I'm not talking about the <laughs> studio, but when I was coming up through the business, you know, there wasn't as much um, cre street credibility, if mm -hmm. you will, yeah. uh, for sci-fi or for fantasy. And so, you know, I, I myself like to do things I haven't done before. So, Like give yourself a new challenge every yeah. film. Yeah, yeah. It's I just more interesting. Yeah. You yeah. know, I, I find it. And you're always doing research. I don't care if it's a contemporary movie or not. Sometimes... Contemporary movies are actually a little more difficult. Well, it's because, a lot of shopping. It's it's so much. Well, it's more that everyone has an opinion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so everybody gets dressed in the morning. Everybody thinks, you know, and as rightly so, you know, that they would know the best mm -hmm. thing. Sometimes when you're doing a period movie, it's a little easier because there's sort of boundaries. And some oh. people may not know that are around may not know if it's accurate 30s or 20s or 60s. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of narrows the group of people that are making comments. <laughs> you want to always have the commentary come, of course, from the director and the actors in the studio. But, um, you know, sometimes that area widens up. So sometimes it's, it is easier to do, um, you know, a period movie in that mm. sense than it is a contemporary movie. Right, of course. Is that, do you think that's because peri sometimes period film has so much, there's so much like research and there's so many like patterns and all these uh, different aspects of period film in conversation with like contemporary film where it's like, you kind of can cr maybe create your own contemporary do you find that when doing contemporary film, you have more freedom than doing period film? Well, you know, these days, again, uh, there's been so many transitions in the business. I mm -hmm. feel that there's sort of a reinterpretation of history going on. So mm -hmm. nowadays, you don't need to be quite as, quote, accurate. You know, right. we, unless you're making a documentary, it's never going to be 100%. Right. Uh, say, for instance, we did JFK we recreated sort of the Zabruder film, if you mm -hmm. will, Bob Richardson, the Academy Award winning DP. Yeah. We interspersed shots with the original um, footage. So we tried to match, in general, the color, the, the, the shape, the silhouette of some mm. of the people that were yeah. lining the Dealey Plaza. But <clears throat> nowadays, you know, I think what's going on is it's kind of really more open to creativity mm -hmm. in the sense that you're not you're not criticized as much for things not being 
accurate. It's, there's a new way to see things, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's casting or, you know, or just a re I'm not going to say revisionist because that has sort of a slightly perhaps a different connotation, mm -hmm. but reinterpretation of mm -hmm. history is constantly going on anyway. And so in terms of character development, I think there's more freedom mm. for period movies. And, um, you know, I think there's also depends on the director you're working with. Of course. You know, some directors want a certain style. Uh, for me, I like to do movies, unless the movie's about fashion, like something <laughs> like Tu Wong Fu, where yeah. it's like really heightened right. fashion, um, not to have the costumes get in the way of the character. Mm. And I think it's uh, sort of important to make sure that, um, you know, if you're doing a broad comedy, of course, it's you really want to totally. kind of bump it up. But, you know, there's a balance between the production design and the actor's performance. So to try to get the clothes and the costumes to really be right in the pocket and to not not be too much, you mm -hmm. know, like that's the fine balance yeah. at least for me. Of course. When you're tackling a film, is there someone from either like production team or a cinematographer or director that you really enjoy working closely with or that you've discovered that you always go to them and then you really like collaborating ideas? Do you have anyone like that when you're tackling film? Well, I find it's very, very important to get the input from the actors. That's mm -hmm. the of course. Thing. <laughs> You have to, first, of course, you're not going to go to the actors first. The first thing you do is talk to the directors. I think that's pretty much across the board. <laughs> then you get the background information and all the visuals from the production designer. Mm -hmm. So you know what the sets are or hope to be. Sometimes you'll never know till very late in the game. You could say, you know, a couple of days before. Um, but you get all the visual information from right. the production designers. You get the dramatic uh, and the interpretive focus from the director, what they're trying to find in the character. And then somehow or other, when you're making this cocktail, you've got to put it the director, <laughs> and then you've got to put the production designer. Then the secret is to be able to have a communication with the actor mm -hmm. prior to, you know, designing, doing illustrations, whatever, right. see what their feeling is about the character. Of course. And then, you know, show up with uh, first samples or illustrations to show the actor, yeah. then get that going. And then you've got to get approvals these days from oh, the studios. Man. Yeah, That's the big change. Of course, there were approvals before, but nothing to the extent right. of the way it is today. Yeah. Wow, that's so interesting. So you've worked with some of, you know, Hollywood's A-listers and you've done extensive fittings with like multiple, multiple celebrities. Is there any specific way you want to, you like to like conquer a fitting when you're doing, um, to make the actor feel like as in character as possible? Is there anything that you like doing to help create like a whole character and bring your two ideas together as one? Well, uh, you know, these days uh, there's a lot more emphasis on illustrations that mm -hmm. have sort of a photorealism. And mm -hmm. I think that could be from the influence of, so, shall we say, like m Marvel movies. Right. Uh, so a lot of times you will go through the process where you'll have the actor's facial likenesses so you can create a lot of uh, options mm -hmm. uh, visually that are very close to the body type and the character and develop that and hopefully pass that in front of the director, um, possibly the studio mm -hmm. and the actor before you actually have a physical fitting and make things. Because once you start the process of building costumes, it can be very expensive, especially if you're doing right. big action movies. And you know, that's a huge long process and a big investment for fabrics and materials. So in terms of the process, I think it's always trying to make sure the actor feels you know, that they've had their say in mm -hmm. it. And, you know, it's a creative process. You can get to the fitting, and I don't know what other costume designers <laughs> can say, will say, but you're, there's always going to be surprises, <laughs> right. no matter how well prepared you are. And I guess the main thing is to be able to be in the moment with them mm -hmm. and try to work out you know, what it is that works for their character. Right. You know, that's that's the big thing. And because you, you're creating right in the moment and you have to have done your prep, your research. Yeah. 
Of course. So, you know, and it's a process. There you oh, go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it can change at the last minute. But Yeah. And you have so much experience doing this, you know, like fittings from, you know, for decades now, you know, it's yeah. like, seems like you're, you really understand how the process works. Yeah. Well, I, I'm really grateful for my years in the garment business mm -hmm. because of just really understanding construction mm -hmm. and fabrics and pattern making and how fabrics drape, what, whatever. But, you know, the key is to how to build the character. Mm -hmm. So you can know all this, but the trick is to find the character. Right. So for some people, you know, it's the shoes. It's mm -hmm. the shoes that brings it all together or, you know, uh, what is it? And, you know, you have to find that really in the moment when you're there in the room uh, together. So no matter, you know, it's like really a live, a creative experience and, yeah. and tr try to find a touchstone for the actors for that character. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool to create like a whole, you know, one character. That's so interesting. Yeah. And it's an arc for the character too. Yeah. Because of they'll always be in the storyline, the beginning, and then you'll have perhaps, especially with action movies, a lot of different phases mm -hmm. that you'll go through. You could have five, six, ten phases where costumes are torn or beat up or whatever, or you the character transforms throughout the movie. So, you know, it's trying to build on that and make sure that it kind of makes sense visually for the arc mm. of the character. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, sometimes you'll take pictures and you'll look at it and you'll think, together oh that's great in the moment and then you'll look at it later i always do photo shoots you know as i'm sure most costume designers uh -huh. do and really study the photos after oh. um because even though in the moment you could think that's right i, I really like to look at it you know yeah. afterwards and really yeah. study it dissect it and try to figure yeah. out like everything that's actually happening in the picture and mm -hmm. how to like move on from there exactly exactly so you have insp you have inspired people with so like with all of your films. Um, are there any films that have inspired you in your career? Well, I particularly like biopics. <laughs> to okay. Be honest. You know, uh, it's really wonderful to be able to uh, read about you know people's lives and you know get a chance to be there. Yeah. Um, of course, JFK was a course. an a memorable experience, as was The Doors. Um, yeah. Because, you know, you get a chance to meet people that were really there. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, at Berkeley, I wound up being a history major. So on a certain level, sort of intellectually speaking, I want to say that it's very satisfying to do the research. And, you know, especially also with Ali, you can, can really delve into the history of the times because what you're doing is you're exploring the culture and the context of it mm. all and you know it's really is about what's going on anywhere wherever you're shooting it could be the story of the 50s the 60s the 70s so you're not just exploring the character but the times and so you're right. learning so much uh even if you thought you knew you know it's really an opportunity to learn so much more about the times and the people and the characters so mm -hmm. Um, but then there's the sci-fi and like something like Oblivion, which was wonderful. Yeah, of course. Uh, because I, for me, I think the key to a successful movie is your relationship with the director. Mm. You know, that that's the cornerstone. Yeah. And what's your vernacular you have with them. For instance, with Oliver, you know, who's very much, uh, you know, an auteur, I mean, his he has such a scope and span and depth and passion for for <clears throat> for all that he's discussing mm -hmm. and it's almost a it's a political conversation right. and someone that you're you know like joe uh yeah. kaczynski he was he is an architect or was an architect and he has a his vernacular is about space and shapes and so it's another conversation to be able to have with him and how he views uh, this the storyline and the emotional content with the let the lighting and the specificity mm -hmm. of the designs because the background everything is designed as one so when we got to top gun for instance you know to have that i'd already had that conversation with him earlier it was really nice to have a comfort uh level with him um to be able to work on top gun afterwards yeah. 
I would love to dive into Top Gun. Sure. I want to know <laughs> everything. I loved the movie so much. I thought it had such like a warm and welcoming and it was just such like a good summer blockbuster film. And it really felt like those older blockbuster films that you would go see like summer nights. And it was, it was just, it just felt like that. Like it felt really like homey and the characters were so well developed and their costumes were so great. And I really need to know about that jacket. So I'm gonna ask you about that later, <laughs> which I know you've called the Franken jacket. I which I, I, I don't know if anybody <laughs> liked that word, but that kind of spoke to what it really was at the end of the day. Yeah, of course. So. So how did you start with Top Gun? When you first got the movie and you got the script, did you already have something in mind for it? Or was it just a meet, like, did you go and watch the original? Um, how did you start your process on doing Top Gun? Well, uh, I had, of course, rem I had seen the original and remembered <laughs> where I was. I was in London when I first saw it. Uh, and, of course, I had worked with Tony Scott, you mm -hmm. know, uh, bless his soul, mm -hmm. um, amazing director. Uh, so I did rewatch it, but um, I think what was important was to sort of make sure, again, when you do your research, research you kind of gather information, but you just sort of let it sort of uh, percolate and let it be the background mm -hmm. because it's very important to go into a meeting with the director and be completely open-minded right? because you just never know, you never know what the conversation's gonna be. So um, what I did was, you know, have, have a meeting obviously with Joe. <laughs> And, and you know, with with Tom, who I had worked for uh, before, worked with before, and um, I basically came to and kind of presented. I, I knew there were going to be iconic looks mm -hmm. that we were going to basically use again. But the idea of the movie was to take it further. We didn't want to do a copy of the original mm -hmm. <clears throat> in terms of uh, you know copying absolutely everything, but capture the mood of it. What was the essence of this movie that, on a visual level for these characters, that works so well in the first, and yet time has passed? How has the story progressed? How mm -hmm. have these characters progressed in the story? And how could it be portrayed, given the fact that you have a script and the storyline says, the character Maverick is going here, here, and here. Uh -huh, so yeah. you do have a bit of an outline, mm -hmm. but at the same time, we wanted to kind of keep it moving into the future. So uh, what was it? I know Tom was very interested in having certain things. We knew that jacket was going to <laughs> make its way back. It's a must. <laughs> it's a must. But we also sort of switched it out. He's not wearing the jacket, you know, throughout the whole right. movie. As it's a he was. beautiful little cameo when, like, takes the jacket out. And I was like, oh, my gosh, right. the original jacket. <laughs> exactly. But the trick is, is what, you know, it's kind of like the shell game. Like, what jacket? <laughs> It, is it really? Is it the original or uh -huh. is it the new jacket? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, we, uh, you know, decided in terms of, I, you know, worked on uh, coming up with some ideas that his other classic jacket was, you know, of course, his green bomber jacket, of course. which he wears, which is, you know, all of these are, are uh, Navy issued, mm -hmm. um, but we built them from scratch wow. because you know, GI stands for general issue. So, you know, they're not terribly well fitted. They're not custom made. They don't look <laughs> like, <laughs> they don't really look like the costumes in the movies. So right. some people say, oh, you just got those off the rack. Well, no, on the contrary, absolutely every piece of clothing and, and uniform was made from scratch oh my gosh. for Tom. Uh, from his shoes, his uniforms, his shirts, the space suit, of course, um, the Franken jacket, the GI <laughs> G1 jacket, um, <clears throat> all of his other green bomber jackets, his jeans, everything was made yeah. from scratch because the silhouettes, mm -hmm. we really wanted to build them to his specs uh, yeah. to fit his body shape. So it may be something you don't notice, but if he were to wear that same item of clothing that was sort of off the rack, it would look 
completely different. Of course. So the fact that it's custom made, you know, it was perfect. The flight suits are all perfectly oh, tailored yeah. for him. Um, and as I think I've mentioned a few times to different people, they were for the ones when he's in the snow, cashmere lined. Oh my so, gosh. <laughs> so it was easier for him to be in the cold weather. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think in terms of getting the input, um, it's a matter of, for me, we wanted to, I wanted to have like a classic feeling to it, mm. something that looked appropriate for, for his character, yet had moved on in time. Yeah. So at the beginning of the movie, when he's in that spacesuit, did you have multiples of that spacesuit or how many did you have? Because I know some had like some dye on there, maybe like when the you know the it's burned up it, it, yeah <laughs> when he goes into outer space <laughs> yeah <laughs> when he, well when he actually parachutes through and yes you know, the uh the uh his uh <clears throat> yeah the sr2 i believe it is that mm -hmm. when it explodes uh well actually what we did was we used the same suit and we shot we shot the clean suit and then oh. we shot another suit, which was kind of a a rare thing to do yeah. because we had so many multiples. Um, but we did have different parts of it that we had tested with burns and aging oh. and whatnot. So um, pretty much that was kind of the way when I, when you know in the shooting schedule. It's pretty rare to be able to do that. Um, most of the time, you know, you'll have like we had four or five of things, but yeah. in the in the case for Tom, we only had one Franken jacket. We only had one <laughs> G one, although we had a, quite a few flight suits and mm, whatever. Mm -hmm. But we did do samples and, of course, did camera tests for everything, so that we could make sure that it was you know the aging. And of course, we had done you know, illustrations of it and of gotten all the stages of it, yeah. you know, sort of prepped and approved by Tom and Joe and, yeah. you know, everyone else. Yeah, because I've heard, um, I know on some projects, people have uh, multiples of like one costume and it goes Many. through different like distressing stages. and stages depending right. on how far they are in their journey. Kind of like maybe how it was on Uncharted or some right. of the movies that you've done like maybe they've had stages sure. of distressing on the costume that's that's more normal than not so right. but i think when a when you have a situation when you're working with someone like tom where he's very precise mm -hmm. as is joe mm -hmm. and he spends good like we would get five hour fittings I mean, that's Holy why cow. I really love working with him because oh my gosh. <laughs> he, uh, and, and some, you know, actors will give you two, two hours. Yeah. That's usually the max. <laughs> but, you know, in the case of working with Tom, we had a lot to cover. And um, so we, he would, you know, really focus on it. I think we got to the point where we felt this was locked in. So mm -hmm. it is very Russian roulette to take that <laughs> approach. But, you know, when I was working with him, it would be a situation where we had gone over things so many times with the fittings, with the stages of aging, with Joe and Tom, right. that we were pretty confident about, you know, because what you want to do is you want to get these things locked in so that he can focus on the, the movie, the work yeah. of the movie. It's not about changing a lot of things at the last minute right. when you're working with... Uh, Tom. Yeah. You know, you could definitely have a new scene coming up. Um, there were some scenes that we shot that were out in the snow that we did some, the uh, soldiers in camouflage that we decided sort of late in the game and we designed a whole set mm -hmm. of snow camo. But for his character, I think, you know, it's really important to, for us to, you know, on the team to be able to make some decisions, really research, do the work, look at it, and then, um, you know, you always have the option, but pretty much focus on acting. Yeah, <laughs> and have yeah. The costumes be, <laughs> have the costumes just be there and work. Right, and have them be like actual com like comfortable and, me and functional. Exactly. You know, because then it makes everybody's life easier. Yeah, I mean, I think any costume designer would tell you, you know, like if you can get it worked out and, you know, mm -hmm. not every movie is that way. Some movies, the whole vibe of the movie is much more spontaneous. You right. Know? But because of the technicality of Top Gun, mm -hmm the importance of the flying sequences. I mean, there was so much technical work
work that was way beyond and above yeah. <laughs> the level of costume design that really the costumes were the found a foundation we really wanted to nail yeah. so that those things could be dealt with and focused on right. while we were shooting. I think the costumes were just so spot on for the film. I think that because of Top Gun and because of the meaning like behind Top Gun, everything is so precise and it's so pinpointed and it's so it's such a hard like career to get into like t Top Gun like Aviation Academy. And I think that the costumes really spoke to the precision of their careers. Like everything was tailored perfectly and everything was mm -hmm. like the the points on the collar, like down to the last button were shiny. I think that really like came in and told a much like broader story of how precise these characters are and how crazy this career that they chose is. I think that yeah. that was so well done. And especially with the rooster character, he seemed <laughs> to come in more like playing the piano and he seemed to not be as serious as the other characters. And with just the over shirt, you know, right. on the like on like a t-shirt, wife beater. Right. Um, I thought that was such a good choice because it, it immediately, before he even said anything, it showed like his character. Right. And that was so, Great. I love that so much. Well, that he was kind of, uh, it was an homage to his dad. Of course. Because uh, as we know, Goose had, you know, he was, so that in that sense, that was a, sort of a decision, you know, a, but I think you could appreciate it even if you didn't know that, mm -hmm. you know, that that was the case. Um, and again, there was not a lot of play, you know, ways to tell the backstories. Um, but I think uh, it seems anyway to me that, when we were making the film that, that this could be a standalone film mm -hmm. or if you didn't see the earlier movie you know or knew about it you know you could pick up on certain things yeah so um that's sort of the direction that the director kind of decided to go in yeah okay so i want to talk about the franken jacket ah. okay i want to talk about i want to know about the patches and right. i would love to know about how many vendors and how many jackets went into this one jacket like this amazing about like mm. smithsonian worthy jackets right well <laughs> I'm gonna take a wild guess, but I'm kind of, usually I'm saying it's around 40 because mm. what 40 jackets that we uh, got in, what we decided to do when we had the task, because first of all, the jacket, <laughs> which had its own bodyguard, <laughs> You know, Tom has the jacket. Oh, he so does. He does. Oh, it's okay. Good. He owns it. Yeah. So He's like, I am um, Top Gun. I need this exactly. jacket. Exactly. <laughs> so you know, and when I kind of looked at it up close, it was like, okay, you know, that <laughs> that fur on the collar is falling apart a bit, <laughs> and um, you know, after first of all, it was quite old when they you know put it together in the eighties. Right. Yeah. So by now, it's you know, it's even it's gone a bit older. <laughs> So for an action sequence to imagine, you know, driving a motorcycle, mm -hmm. you know, all these things were a bit worrisome. So I knew right away we were going to have to do You're something. To, right. So when we were working on it, um, you know, I really was begging Tom. <laughs> I said, I really have to be able to work with the with the original because even though you see it you, you need to see what's in the shoulder yeah. pads and whatever yeah that being said we wanted to change the silhouette slightly mm -hmm. um so what we did is um there is a vendor that we work with s m wholesale and um he does military uniforms for us and we along with uh, steve uh managed to reach out to quite a few vendors mm. that sell this particular G1 jacket that yeah. was manufactured between 1947 and 1949 in a couple of different factories. Wow. So different dealers have them, you know, yeah. in hand. So we would get different jackets to come in. And basically what we were having to do is to, if you're gonna put together a jacket and try to match the hero jacket, you want a jacket that's going to be the similar color in leather. So say, for instance, you get a sleeve from one jacket, you know, maybe the cuff is ruined and you can't right. really use that cuff. Well, 
different kind of wool, different color wools are used on various, wow. for the different jackets from different factories. So that was one of the reasons the front placket was different. When we put all these different jackets together, we had a sleeve maybe and a cuff from one. It had to kind of go with the right color. And then, of course, we had to use aging and kind of leather dyes to mm -hmm. kind of blend it all. Yeah. But that was the reason we needed to get so many jackets in because it was almost yeah. impossible then to get the right color of the fur collar that was still intact. Oh my gosh. Uh, it was pretty tricky. Well, that's, we had to get a lot of jackets in just to kind of take one and put it in and then to be able to fit them together and have yeah. the tailors be able to kind of get the right proportions. Oh my gosh. And was this all done in-house, the well, dyeing and everything? We basically work with with uh, our vendors mm -hmm. and of course we have our own aging and dyeing right. department. Of course. So it was done in stages where we would maybe work on the sleeve and do the dyeing and the aging mm -hmm. of a jacket, like the, the <clears throat> particular sleeve and the cuff, or maybe the back plackets the mm. front plackets to try to get them like assembled in the different color patterns with right. the aging that we wanted because I took hundreds of pictures of the hero jacket of course wow. and we had a whole wall of photographs so that we had it because I couldn't keep the jacket the whole time right so <laughs> and then we did the the patches were also hand loomed because the original patches were hand loomed so most of the embroidery is done of course machine wow. so we had to have special people that did that and that's kind of doesn't really exist anymore so yeah. you know trying to recreate um sort of the way things were done in the past um this happens in a lot of period films so uh but anyway that was the whole process and mm. then spa placing them and also getting the proportions for the shoulder pads slightly different because right. in the 80s shoulder pads were kind of <laughs> So mind of their own. <laughs> we changed, they have a world, of, yeah, mind of their own. So we we changed it a bit, the proportions, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow, that's fascinating. I didn't know that that many people and time and labor went into that one piece. That yeah. is, that's truly incredible. <laughs> it was amazing. And then, you know, the same for like the jeans, we work with a uh, wonderful collaboration with Vince. They've worked, oh, I've worked with them yeah. in quite a few movies and uh marie vogel over there uh, -huh. uh was able to help us out and we had different jeans with you know boot cuts because tom wears his original cowboy boots oh my gosh <laughs> oh those are great i love the boots <laughs> so we wanted to get like a boot cut but have the right proportion but you know and also have the rise on the jeans be a little mm -hmm. bit higher on some yeah. of them for the motorcycle scenes so yeah they were really helpful and you really need a factory to be able to, with the right machines for the denim to be able to manufacture. Yeah. You know, uh, and wanted a little bit of stretch in the jeans, but not too much. So they were, we had quite a few pairs of jeans. So mm -hmm. different for different scenes, for standing, for sitting, for motorcycle riding. Right. That's where you come into all of the multiples, like okay. you said, for different, you know, different, um, like most action movies. Yeah. Oh, that's so interesting. And then also what I've noticed in the movie is that there were so many brilliant little Easter eggs that I thought, like when I first saw Penny and she had an A on her necklace, I was like, an A, what is that for? You know, and I was like, oh, I'm, is that her name? And then she said Penny and I was like, what is the A for? I thought it was going to be, you know, like a husband or something like I wasn't, or I don't know, maybe something like that. I wasn't sure. But then when we meet Amelia, I thought, oh, that's such a, like such a good little Easter egg because right. it just pulls everything so well together. And then, of course, the rooster is like over the, you know, sh uh, t tank shirt, an homage to his father. Right. I just thought like in the jackets that Tom Cruise are wearing, it was just such brilliantly placed that it was just so enjoyable to watch. Like all these little things come together as one and everything thread through. It was right. like really, really cool. <laughs> Well, um, you know, thank you. And you know, a lot of people don't notice those things. And I think costume designers in general try to, you know, put things in the story that will tell you a little bit more mm -hmm. than what's going on just for the obvious. And right. I think you being obviously... <laughs> 
<laughs> um, you know, you've really done your research about the movie. So I think, um, you know, thank you for sharing. Oh, that. yeah. I'm, I'm glad you noticed. A lot of times people don't notice. And a lot of costume designers go, oh, no, nobody noticed. But um, they're there. And yeah. uh, sometimes people will notice. But hopefully a lot of details is I think as a costume designer, you know, you do focus on the details mm -hmm. and hopefully layer everything so you know it kind of gives it a little richer yeah. feeling to it yeah it does well it feels like it completes their character to me like right. it feels like it really paints them as like not just like a character in a movie but as a whole person you know with the a and with you know like you could tell that she, like that was like her place like she felt like she belonged there right i thought like through her costume and all of her clothes looked really well put in the production design it just looked so um well thought out and everything worked so well together i loved penny's clothes like i loved all of the really like great shirts that she was wearing and the blues were so pretty with her hair color i thought it was like so well done then even when she's on the boat and she's wearing the blue and the white like so cute and nautical right. like i loved that whole feeling she she i really loved all of her like costumes and changes she looked just completely like a wholesome mom character right again i think it's you know you could say it's kind of classic um yes. the idea is to sort of make it timeless for all mm -hmm. the characters i think that was sort of the idea yeah some movies you want to go and you know the movie is about being trendy but yeah in, in this case i think it's kind of timeless mm -hmm. is a good word timeless. um you know I mean, I'll go back to another movie I've done, not to switch subjects, but The Holiday, which I oh think is uh, <laughs> something a lot of my girlfriends uh, always like. So, oh, I watched The Holiday again. Oh, um, I love that Every movie. Christmas, sometimes <laughs> I watch it in the summertime. But, um, you know, I work with Nancy Myers, who is an amazing oh, director. Course. And, uh, you know, these days there's a lot more female directors, but, you know, back then maybe not so many. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, you can watch that movie and see that it's kind of timeless. It holds up. Yes. And I think, uh, you know, again, in terms of design, my approach is what can you do to make the costumes work for the character without overpowering them and keep it so that it's not, unless the movie is about making it very trendy, which of course is a, of is course. a directorial choice, uh -huh. uh, you know, to try to make it hold up, you know, yeah. over time. Yeah. Do you think there will be a Top Gun 3? <laughs> <laughs> and if so... That <laughs> is a good question. Apparently, a lot of people do. I mean, I, I read in the news every day. I will say I keep reading more and more stories about Top Gun. Seemingly, a lot of people are having that conversation. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would not venture to even go there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see, right? We'll see. Stay tuned for that. <laughs> Stay tuned, as they say, right? <laughs> okay, so I have another question about sure. Top Gun and Tom Cruise. So he is kind of famous for doing a lot of his own stunts. When, Absolutely. When <laughs> you found out you were doing this film and um, ev like everything was coming into place, were you at all nervous for how many costumes you were going to have to produce because he does his own stunts? Uh, you know, I have done, I had worked with him on Oblivion, as we talked about, and then I did another fabulous character, which is one of my favorites, Les Grossman for Tropic Thunder. Oh, yes. <laughs> which we haven't course. touched on. Um, but uh, it was one of my favorite characters. No, I wasn't nervous because I, I've done a lot of big action movies, yeah. and so you know i've been sort of trained mm -hmm. uh to think about making sure we have plenty of everything right it's just uh trying to within the production time get enough of everything made and yeah. so that wasn't the part that made made me nervous <laughs> <laughs> of course <laughs> yeah i mean and uh, tom's really so great to work with again i say that because he's very specific he knows what things are he gives you feedback mm -hmm. um he's not wishy-washy about it and you know one wonderful thing is that he asks your opinion oh that's which great. is great yeah you know, one would think more often than not well like people will say well what do you think is the costume designer right. 
<laughs> I will say I've had situations where they don't ask the costume designer at all. Oh my they gosh. They seem to ask everyone else, but <laughs> but um, Tom is very respectful of costume designers. Oh, and that's so I nice. I think to know. probably all of the designers that have worked with him would probably say that. He's, oh, that's nice. He's uh, and it's wonderful for for all the people that he works with. I yeah. Think. Yeah. So you've worked with a lot of, it seems like military or naval based like men's clothing um lots of uniforms lots of things like that so i want to ask you about tropic thunder mm. when you were doing tropic thunder how what was that experience like for you because it is such a hilarious film and it's it like every, i feel like everybody knows that movie because it's it's so fun and it's so like like it's just great what was it like still work like working on that movie was it well, like yeah i had done uh some other projects with ben uh -huh. so um you know i think that knowing his sensibility a bit um and also working with justin thoreau who was uh, i believe he was uh, had writing credit on the mm -hmm. movie as well uh, of course ben directed it I mean, you know, it's a satire about the movie business, so <laughs> have at it. <laughs> I mean, it's so much fun to do the characters, uh, really. I, it was, it was uh, obviously part of it in looking in retrospect might be very controversial mm. in today's, you know, political atmosphere. <laughs> but um, it was a satire. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, we just had a great time kind of coming up with the characters. And again, yeah what I did was have it was great illustrators. So, oh, great. you know, we kind of went through, um, but in order for me to do an illustration, a lot of times what I do is, you know, I'll work out things with the character. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll kind of go get some samples of things and, you know, put it together. I get a, I get a fit model in and kind of work on that. Like there was a character, um, uh, <clears throat> that Ben played where he's, um, he has he's performing in this kind of uh entertainment sort of like on stage at, uh -huh. a, at a you know on a scene here and he we made the costume out of the bags of heroin which were all <laughs> stamped and there were canvas bags they were kind of hop sack bags but what i did was i went and i just got some different materials and kind of draped it on a on a on a stand-in sort of speak, oh my you know? gosh so then from that then we did some illustrations but just had a good time i mean yeah. the idea of it was it was a comedy and i think that really shows up in um you know in in tom's character les grossman it was pretty funny i mean that's <laughs> yeah. one of my favorite scenes i think i've ever been present filming Mm. Uh, hilarious you know? <laughs> um, and even that night i think down to the end the one thing we didn't have was the right shoes <laughs> so we were for whatever reason we had plenty of trainers there as they say and uh, i remember <clears throat> we were doing a night shoot at universal studios and we actually went up i don't know it was 10 o'clock at night or something we were shooting and we went up to universal studios and it was there were some stores open and bought a pair <laughs> oh my god of trainers <laughs> because we were still looking for the same for the for the perfect shoes um which a little contradicts it a little bit but i mean ben is a different kind of director He's, right you know, right kind of like in the moment but um <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah that was like a wonderful time you know and it's about having a good time and mm -hmm. kind of playing around with characters and seeing what you kind of come up with yeah um you know in the beginning the flashbacks or they had like all these different uh trailers for movies where mm. we had different rap artists and they were you know they had fake sports drinks and you know <laughs> we did like printed fabrics because the wrappers had their own fabrics that they designed uh -huh. and they had you know sort of like faux if you will you know gucci or <laughs> faux louis vuitton uh -huh. you know for their own but we had a really good time and just kind of making fun of the whole yeah the whole idea of everything about the movie business so yeah it's one of my favorite movies oh that's so great do you still get asked about it now yeah, 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 some different stories. I mean, I wasn't necessarily fun shooting it all the time because <laughs> we were out in the, 
in the jungles. We were actually in Kauai, you know, right. in the rain and the mud. And oh my whatever. gosh. But yeah, some memorable moments and with an incredible cast of yeah. actors. I mean, and you know, Robert Downey Jr. Oh my and gosh. Uh, Ben and Nick Nolte and mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> yeah. Jack Black, <laughs> oh one of my, my favorites gosh. Yeah. to work with. I've done, <laughs> I did another movie with him. Uh, house with a clock in its walls uh -huh. was kind of fun he's yeah. great to to work with and i worked with him many years ago in enemy of the state right way back when with will smith yeah, yeah. Did, you worked with him a couple of times right on yeah. hitch ollie yeah right yeah. Enemy of the state yeah um ollie was an amazing experience yeah that, that was with michael mann yeah I, lo I, I love working with will he's uh, you know easy to be around mm -hmm. with you know and easy to work with you know yeah. he's a really um, you know, welcoming and uh, demeanor. So yeah, know, it was a good time to work with him. So you've done so many movies, obviously. That's why you're here. <laughs> but um, is there any one particular that you always look really fondly on? Like you probably look fondly on all your films, but is there any one that like tugs at your heartstrings that you just absolutely loved doing? Well, you know, I think cross between the doors, JFK mm -hmm. and Ali, because when you recreate a scene, especially I'm going to say JFK and you're, you've recreated Dealey Plaza and you're there in Dealey Plaza or you're there in the third floor of the book depository, which no one gets to go into. You go into the fourth floor of the book <laughs> depository because that's what's open. Right. And you kind of are recreating a very important moment in American history. Yeah. Or even with uh, Ali, you know, you recreating, I think, important moments in time for political movements or for, in the case of <laughs> President Kennedy being shot. I mean, it's, oh my it's really yeah. chilling. And, um, you know, it really brings to light how powerful movie making is and recreating yeah. these, these, uh, incredible points in time you mm -hmm. know so when you're really living it and you're looking around and it's almost like you're in, you know you're in a time travel situation <laughs> you, you really experience it and you speak to a lot of the people doing the research so it brings that to life so yeah. i think those biopics i mean certainly other movies in terms of enjoying the time or uh -huh. having wonderful relationships yeah that, that's fantastic and, yeah you know it's a whole family uh could be dysfunctional or maybe not <laughs> <laughs> but, i mean for better or worse you know you're in it together but um just recreating some moments in history has been pretty powerful yeah so when you're working on film do you usually use try to use like some of the same people throughout every project in your department or do you does it does it just like differ on every single show to based based on you know people's strong suits or what is that like well you know um you always try to work with people that you feel comfortable with that mm -hmm. you you like trust have, you, you trust of course but because everyone's work cycle is different so, mm -hmm. um, you know, I've been very fortunate to be able to work with some amazing crew members um, and supervisors, assistant designers, age or dyers, set people. You're really only as good as your crew. Seamstresses, cutter fitters, um, you know, what's happened in the business since I started is that there's so many more projects going on. So mm -hmm. it's become and a big challenge to be able to, you know, get people because there's so many projects, which is wonderful yeah. if you're sort of starting out to have an opportunity to work on a project. Um, you know, there's so many opportunities to, oh, yeah. to work on projects. Yeah. There really weren't as many opportunities back right. when I was doing filmmaking because right. you don't make 150 movies or no. 250 movies a oh, year. Oh my gosh. Um, <clears throat> different studios um so over time you know it's getting it gets to be a little more challenging but um you know i've been very very fortunate to have some great people and try to work with and you know always try to work with new people that mm -hmm. are coming in 
Um, but you know, your cutter fitters are your right hands. You know, these are the people that that really uh, are going to. If you're building costumes, you they need to know. They need to have the expertise. Right. So years and years and years of experience is yeah. important. And you ask ask them, what do you think how it should be built? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, um, craftsmanship is really key, and hopefully there will be, we won't lose it all. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh, I know. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> um, you know, it's a process, but people have to, uh, we all have to put our time in to, to learn our crafts. So. Yeah, do you think because you have a background in, um, because you went to FIT and you have a background in um, garment construction and mm -hmm. draping, that it's easier to communicate with your tailor shop? Right, and I also, after I've, left FIT, you know, I did actually do a, a year here at FITM as well. Mm. Um, well, it's hard to know. Mm -hmm. One of the things I've always said is, gee, I wish I could have worked with X, Y, and Z costume designers. So right. I would learn how they work. Right. I don't know how anybody else works. <laughs> I didn't, I always started out as a costume designer. Mm -hmm. I mean, from the very beginning. Uh, and had to learn the hard way, yeah. uh, which means um, draw on my own experience. I didn't train right. under another costume designer. I always tried to learn as much as I could from my peers. Mm -hmm. But um, I think from being in the garment business, I knew that years of experience in terms of pattern making, cutting, fitting, draping, uh, being in fittings, how to work with, uh, you know, the fitters to mm -hmm. be able to see what they're doing and, and catch what they're looking at. Uh, that was my training and I rely on that, you know, yeah. uh, a, a lot because those are the people that had have had the experience. Now, at this point, I've had a lot of experience, <laughs> a lot of experience but you know, you're always learning. From right. the age of dyers, I always ask them, well, what do you think? How's this going to work out? Because I rely on them, you know, the way hopefully directors will rely on costume designers mm -hmm. to ask their opinion about what's the latest in terms of 3D printing. I'm not, right. I don't have time to be up on everything. I mean, yeah. obviously that's something that's not new news, it's mm -hmm. old news, but, or, you know, sculpting and molding pieces, yeah. but you can't be an expert at everything. Right. So I think the best approach as a costume designer is to rely, mm -hmm. you have to be knowledgeable enough to know what works and doesn't, and then make your choices. But you always want to rely on people that are spending full time in their area of totally. expertise. So yeah, and because training is so important, is there anything? Is there any advice you can give the next generation of designers and costume designers for their start? Well, I I think that it's an important skill. To, important skills, to, even if you're doing a contemporary movie, and it says that you know calls for shopping, you know, <laughs> it's helpful to know about pattern making and, and to know about draping because ultimately you may be called upon to do, to build costumes. And so, you know, it, it, it all goes into informing your choices, mm -hmm. even if you are going to buy contemporary clothing, you know, yeah. for your characters. So, um, it doesn't hurt to have knowledge whether or be a go to the museums make mm -hmm. sure you're up on what's happening not only historically in terms of the art world but contemporary art yeah you know to be exposed to every area mm -hmm. so that it's all input you know right uh, it's constantly so learning. not just technical yeah. aspects but i think expose yourself to art to music to to make sure that you absorb mm -hmm. so it's really a process of absorbing and then hopefully when the time comes you'll be able to come up with something <laughs> interesting creatively that people will be happy with yeah you know because it's not necessarily you know a logical process mm -hmm. yeah oh great well thank you so much for talking with us today marlene well, i had thank you. i've learned so much about you and your really long career in this hard industry and so impressive. Um, where can our viewers follow you on social media? Well, uh, let's see. I'm I at my website, uh, www.marlenestewart.com. Uh, I confess to being more uh, sort of focused on my meditation. 
I'm a love Buddhist. It. Love it. Great. <laughs> and I spend probably more medita in time in meditation and practicing <laughs> that than I do on social media. But mm -hmm. I, I, I do have an Instagram page. Okay. And perhaps there'll be times that I'll, I'll uh, between work, spend a little more time yeah. in that area. But, you know, on my website is probably where you'll find me most of the time. Perfect. Where we're going to give you a follow. So <laughs> we Thank probably you. already follow you. So <laughs> I'm going to give you a follow. <laughs> Thank you. Thank thanks. you so much, Marlene. I really you. appreciate you being here today. Well, thanks for the opportunity to be of here course. and to be with all your listeners. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. I would like to thank our sponsor, Costume Rentals Corporation. The variety of costumes at Costume Rentals Corporation is expansive, located in North Hollywood, California. The supply room at CRC stocks any item a production might need for the costume trailer, office, or fitting room. Suppliers can be shipped around the globe. Authentic to every detail, CRC has the patches, medals, buckles, buttons, accessories, and research to make all elements historically accurate. Thank you to our guest costume designer, Marlene Stewart, for coming on the show. It's been such a pleasure to have you on here. A special thank you to our founder and executive producer, Martika Ibarra, and co-founder, costume designer, Marilyn Vance. Thank you to The John Campia Show, and thank you to all our viewers for tuning in and to be sure to subscribe on our YouTube channel. Tune in into the audio version wherever you listen to your podcast. Thank you so much for being here today. Today's sponsor is Costumes Rental Corporation. Thank you to our sponsor, Costumes Rental Corporation. The variety of costumes at Costumes Rental Corporation is expansive. Located in North Hollywood, the supply room at the Costumes Rental Corporation stocks any item a production might need for the costume trailer, office, or fitting room. Supplies can be shipped around the globe. Authentic to every detail, Costumes Rental Corporation has the patches, medals, buckles, buttons, accessories, and research to make all costumes historically accurate.